All right, so <clears throat> I'll, I'll uh, hold on. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm I'm really excited to talk about this new package. It's still in beta, but we are working on it. Um, and so far, it has been the the um, examples and the code that we've been trying has been working very well. Uh, so it's the package is called Grammar of Modeling, uh, and I'll also show a uh, an online tool which is uh, we call Decision Tricks, and there's a reason behind why we named it that way. Um, that helps you actually do the coding. Uh, as well in a visual interactive way. So I'll, I'll do a quick demo for both. So it shouldn't take very long. Um, <clears throat> first, I acknowledge my uh, amazing collaborators on this work. This includes my Darth uh, colleagues, uh, Fernando and Tom, um, uh, Aline, Petros, Alex, uh, David, and Alan, and also Jeremy and uh, Maria Brenning uh, as well. So the motivation for the grammar of uh, modeling was uh, was motivated really by the grammar of graphics and the fidiverse that I'm pretty sure uh, all of you are familiar with. Uh, and uh, I saw a, a video by Hadley Wickham. I was looking at one of the videos and he was talking about cupcakes. That he is he apparently he likes uh, make, uh, baking and he was he was given a, a book about cupcakes. And when he was going through the book, what he realized is that. So, uh, there's a lot of repetition. So, for example, this is the vanilla cupcake. You know, one cup, uh, one cup of flour. You preheat the oven for 350. Uh, you do like three uh, quarters of a cup uh, of sugar, and then you do like baking powder, and you just put the flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, and whatever. But then, when he flipped to the chocolate cupcake, it's the same thing. You know, there's the change only a couple ingredients. So instead of doing one cup of flour, now you're doing three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of flour. <laughs> but this is the same thing. So you can go back and forth. And this goes on and on for all the other recipes. Every single recipe is only slightly different than others. But then you fill up the book about uh, cupcakes. There's the book uh, for that. And I'm pretty sure it's a really good book. So there's no, no criticism of that. It's just the idea of repetition. And when do you want to have repetition and when you don't? Uh, and here's here's the link for the YouTube. It's only 11 minutes, so it's really highly recommended uh, you take a look at it. So what I what I realized is that a lot of our HTA models, or a lot of our um, cost effectiveness analysis models, are actually very repetitive, just like those recipes in that book. So you know, very similar to the Hummingbird um, uh, Bakery Cookbook, we do things quite repetitively. I'm pretty sure you all know about that. And uh, we, it's really difficult to debug, troubleshoot, maintain, understand. Um, and especially when you try to make slight changes or debugging, you almost have, at least I do, I have this kind of bad feeling that I really don't want to do it because I know how hard it is that if I make a slight change, I have to do it everywhere. So, um, and also it becomes very challenging to read and communicate and not easily reproducible. So anytime that there is, somebody requires the, the code or they ask for it, it's very hard to communicate with them and give it to them um, uh, because it's, it's, uh, you have to spend a lot of time teaching them and walking through, uh, them through it uh, as well. So there's a lot of issues that motivated uh, creating the, um, the Gmode package. And, uh, the example I'll be showing here to demonstrate the GMO package is based on our tutorial uh, for time-dependent cohort uh, state transition models using R and cost effectiveness example that was uh, published in medical decision making. So this is the second of the series. We have the introductory one, which was uh, time-independent, uh, but this one is the time-dependent one. So I'll, I'll show you um, uh, how the code looks like with the GMO package. Next. So um, so the current uh, practice or the current grammar, this is kind of a, uh, you know, some software builds, builds uh, models this way. It's a, it's a Markov model. So you have four strategies, standard of care, uh, decision alternative A, uh, B, and AB, right? Like, and they're all slightly different from each other. But the each one of them is a Markov model, right? So you have four decisions and um, each one of them, you know, involves a Markov um, uh, model where a, a, or what you call like a cohort state transition model. So here you have four states, healthy, uh, figure one, sicker, and death. This is all called our famous six sicker model, right? Uh, but the healthy, you know, like this is the outcomes. So these are events within the cycle. So this, everything happens within the cycle. Uh, this is the state at the beginning of the cycle. These are the states at the beginning of the cycle. And these are here, the states at the end of the cycle. So for example, you start healthy. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you see a matters. Uh, so you have you start with a healthy state and then you end up with either sick, healthy, or death. You know you start in uh, sick at year one, 
uh, because there's a tunnel. I didn't want to repeat this uh, 90 or 99 times. So that's, I just put one, I say, uh, sick year one, and then you go, you, you either become sicker, you go, uh, or you stay sick in year uh, plus one, or you become healthy or you die and so forth. And you have the same thing for the outcomes for the other things. But when you notice here is that there's a lot of repetition. So, uh, and this is a very simple model. We we did it just for demonstration. Now, not only there's a lot of repetition within these, like for example, if you look at the die um, event, the death event, uh, so you have the uh, event die repeating 16 times. So when people read these models, they can actually read them one by one. So you get here and you say, hey, this is my uh, death event, my die event. So. If you are, uh, you know, if you enter the standard of care, so if standard of care and healthy, then probability of die is so and so. If standard of care and sick at year Y, then probability of die is this and this. If standard of care and sick, and, uh, then probability of die is that. So, so you go and read uh, each one of them as a sentence from beginning to end. So there is no conjunction, there is no summarization, there is nothing that helps you concatenate and compress the amount of information that you need to present and to deal with. So you got this, and then the problem is it's not just here. It's also every single strategy repeats things that are almost, I would say, probably, I'm just making a guess, 90% of the time is exactly the same, right? Like you only have, so here, for example, decision alternative A, it's the same as standard of care, but you have a higher utility for the sticker state. But for that, the whole thing repeats. You can, you can argue that you can make functions and so forth, but then at some point, you kind of becomes too complicated. Uh, so... Uh, so the grammatical modeling was a way to kind of consolidate this amount of information and make it simpler to communicate and to represent. So, and here's here's uh, the uh, like the um, uh, idea behind it. So, <clears throat> in grammar modeling, you have a generic cycle tree. This is at the core of uh, of it. So instead of having all of these branches from all the states, from all the decisions going to every single other branch, you only have a single sequence. You only have something we call generic cycle three. So here you start at the beginning of the uh, cycle. So you start here and then you go through the events and you can combine those An event can have multiple outcomes and so forth, but this is a simplified version. So here you have, uh, you start here, regardless of what your state is, what, your, what's, what strategy you are under. This is the same, a sequence that gets applied everywhere. So you have this die event. So if it happens, then you're going to end up in the death state. If the get sick happens, then you're going to end up. Uh, so if that doesn't happen or it's non applicable, for example, if somebody is already dead, they're not going to have a die event. So they might, they, then they will, you will consider a second event. If the second event happens, you get sick, you, they go to sick. If the third event happens, recover, you know, they go to healthy. If the fourth event happens, uh, progress, they, they're going to go to the sicker event. If not, none of these things happen, they will stay where they started from. 